I've covered the world devastation, mass shootings, protests. For over 10 years I did this job, and even to this day, I've interviewed over 5,000 people, including the president, the pope, and just all of these people overcoming, overcoming, because as a reporter, they never send you out to cover good news. I always say that I meet people on the worst day of their lives, when they've lost their home or a loved one. So I just started asking myself, you know, what am I learning from all of these interviews? And I poured all of that into the authentic leadership formula. This is a very simple five-step formula to live confidently, to thrive amid change, and to achieve the success you deserve, and we're gonna start working on it together right now. Identifying these elements, your uniqueness, your vulnerability, your story, your values, and multiplied by your network. So we kick it off with the first step, which is identifying your uniqueness. How did this happen for me? So I came to this country on a scholarship. That's how unlikely my story would have been somewhere else. And I got a scholarship to an Ivy League school. And I was like, baby, I'm done. Ivy League, so the notion was, I was never gonna have to truly struggle to find a job. You know what year I came to America? 2008. Yeah, we all remember what happened in 2008. I came to a new country during the worst recession since the Great Depression. And it happened to all of you, probably. The scarier the scenario, the more you shrink, you act out of fear, and then you start copying other people, right? Because you're afraid to stand out, to take any risks. That's exactly what I did. I was copying other news reporters and how they looked and what they wore and the kinds of stories that they covered. So my first news reports were crap. I wasn't standing out. I was shrinking. I actually got fired from my first job in journalism out of school. So one of my early mentors came to me and she said, Mariana, I'm just looking at your stuff and it's not even you. Why are you hiding, covering all these things about yourself? And she challenged me to make a list of all these things about myself that I was hiding. My list looked a little something like this. I was born somewhere different. I didn't know anybody in American broadcasting that was from Venezuela. The fact that English is not my first language, I have a slight accent, and you know, this is an industry that strives for perfect enunciation, right? And then finally, I have an uncommon name. My full name is Mariana del Carmen Atencio Cervoni. Do you want to repeat that back to me? <laughs> no, ma'am, he says. Yeah, I want to, this is literally what it says in my driver's license. So I went to this mentor and I said, what am I supposed to do with this? I can't change any of this, this is part of my identity. And she said, see, that's the thing. You don't have to change it. You have to flip the script. It was, guys, as if a light bulb went off. How can I turn these things that I'm kind of ashamed of, I kind of want to hide because I don't think they jive with an idea of success in my industry and turn them into competitive advantages? So the fact that I'm from somewhere different means, hey, I can connect to this community better than most people because I'm living and breathing it firsthand. So start to think about how this relates to you. You know, when you are talking about guests and communities you're serving, how can that experience, that background, that small town where you come from, help you truly see that group of people that only you can connect to? So the fact that English is not my first language means, hey, I can anchor the news in Spanish and English. So the traditional route to make it in broadcasting is you start out in a small town, and then they pluck you to go somewhere big like New York. I knew that was not gonna work for me. So I doubled down on what made me different. I started out in Spanish language, climbed my way up at Univision, crossed over to NBC News. It was a non-traditional path, but it worked because it was based on what made me different. And then finally, my name. Wow. In the beginning, my news reports, and you can still see this, I believe, in YouTube. I used to grab onto the mic and say, Good evening, folks. This is Mariana coming to you live. Who the heck is Mariana? Because it's not this girl. It took me 10 years. Imagine that, the biggest source of my power, my name. 10 years of feeling like an imposter, of exuding fakeness, because the audience is receiving that. To grab onto the mic and to say, good evening, this is Mariana coming to you live. Nobody forgot that on television. Because they looked at me and they said, wait a minute, this girl made it, she didn't have to change who she is. Authenticity is magnetic, people are drawn to you. 
So it was about more than this Mariana, it was about everybody who has felt different. And this is, again, universal. Everybody here has felt different since we were little kids in the playground, looking at me and feeling like they could be authentic also. And that's what you're gonna do when you go back to the dealership as the authentic leaders you are. You're gonna create openness and a culture of openness for people to take the masks off and to be themselves. And that's real change. So, I identified my uniqueness, that is the first step, now I need you to do it. You all should have gotten these cards that were in each of your seats when you walked in. I want you to write three things in these cards. Three things that make you not perfect, but perfectly you. By being perfectly you, you will tap into that customer base, that peer group, and rise to that promotion that only you can reach, remember, if you are authentic. So, grab onto the card, write three things, challenges overcome, quirky family background, languages that you speak, are you the first in your family to go to college, are you first or the third to work in the automotive industry, put it all in the card. I am gonna give you two minutes on the clock, but I need production, they need some music to focus, please, something. Great, get to work guys, you have two minutes. I'm gonna be quizzing you on this after. Three things that make you who you are. Are you a good listener? Are you a generational curse breaker? I want you to look at these cards. This is not meant to be hidden. This is meant to be celebrated, to be shouted from the rooftops. When you leave today, take this card. If I see any of these cards on your tables, I'm gonna get very mad. Because that is like tossing your uniqueness to the floor. Take this to the dealership, put it on the cork in your office, bring it to the dinner table, create confidence around it on your LinkedIn. You know, I actually did this with the team in Sawgrass, and again, it is so simple, but if you do this during a breakout session, a lunch session, you will learn so much about each other. Again, this is the most exceptional gift you have to offer the world, and it is the first step of your authentic leadership formula.